So now we're going to be working on how to add a finish line. We've made it so far that our player can move forward and smash into obstacles. As soon as it hits the obstacles, it resets. Now we're going to do a similar thing and just have it so that our player, once it hits all the way down here, will restart right over for us. So the first thing we want to do is go to where we want our actual line to be. That's going to be over here near the end here. And we're going to place down a finish line. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but let's just make it simple. Create a 3D object is a cube. cube. Cool. And then we're going to make it so that it's all the way at the end over here. So we'll click the move tool and over there. Now some of these things we can kind of zero out to make it e easy for us. Now this wants to be, Y wants to be one, X, X wants to be about one. There we go. And we can just drag this all the way towards the end of our area. And we know our platform is about 100, so the fact that this is getting close to 100 seems about right. So let's move back just a little bit. Go. I'm going to zoom in and take a look at it a little bit better. About right. Cool. So at this point, we're going to look around at it. And we're going to expand this guy out a little bit. So we're going to say that his scale in the x direction is about 10. Position in the x will be 0. And there we have it. One block that covers the entire end of our track. So what's cool now is that before we're having it so that when it smashed into something, it would reset. And that's cool that basically we want to do the exact same thing. This isn't a barrier, so you don't want to name it barrier. We want to name it something like, I don't know, finish the line. I know, I am ridiculously uh, creative when it comes to these names. And then I can add the tag of finish. See, there we go. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. One, we can have it so that our player moves forward, gets past all of these obstacles, and then eventually gets down to the side that has the finish line, and then he smashes into the finish line, and that ends the game, or transitions into another level. The other thing that we could do is have it so that the player goes and treats this kind of more like a finish line, where it just goes blasting straight past it. However, it will still signify that we have hit our finish line. So I want to try that. I want to make it so that it'll just keep going and then inevitably keep running all the way forevermore going that way until, well, never. It'll just always forever keep going until the level changes and we want to do that later. So what we can do is we can make this guy a trigger. What that means is it will trigger an event. So if I click that, let's see what happens. I'm going to save it. I'm going to try pretty hard to navigate this window and not lose my game. And there we go. Run straight past it. However, if we notice, it didn't actually show that we hit that finish line because right, we have it selected so that every single time it hits something, it goes forward and shows. The reason why is because this is no longer a hittable object. It's no longer a solid object that we smash into. So therefore, if we go back into our code, it's no longer a collision event. It is, however, called a let's do private void on, let's see what else we have, on application 
equation is equal to 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 trigger. So remember how we made it a trigger event, right? So now this has an on trigger enter. Let's see if this works. So I'll add a debug message. Debug dot log. You have finished and won. Add a semicolon VN because it's a statement. Save that. Let's go back and see what happens. If we look down here, you have finished and won. See? So now it shows up and logs that event. So that is basically it. We have it so that our player can go and collide into objects, and then when they collide, they reset. And then we have it so that when the finish line is approached, that the player goes straight through it and ends up uh, calling, triggering an event that won't stop them necessarily. It'll just show that this thing has been passed. Now, this is a great thing to do if you want to have someone have a check mark. Like let's say that this was a racing game that had several checkpoints or several laps in it. Instead of having it so they smashed into a, uh, a obstacle at every single time they completed a lap, they make it so that they could pass through this object and trigger an event that shows that the lap has been completed and to increment those laps. So I'm just going to do a couple more things to make this a little bit more pretty. Uh, you can do this however you like. I am going to add a, another material create material. I'm going to call it finish line. And I'm going to make it, uh, oh, let's see, yellow. It's kind of a weird color, yellow. Gold. There we go. Gold. Maybe make it so it's a bit more transparent. So, I'm going to click on this, drag it into there. Now we can see this guy. Make it so it's metallic. Get so it's a little bit shinier if we want. Cool. So, there we have it. A finish line that detects when the player hits it, but doesn't reset the game. So, next time, what we're going to do is have it so that the after we finish, we have another level to go to. So we'll start adding levels to our game. That's it. See you next game.